Welcome to Lively Lewis Stories. Buckle up, because you're about to join Levi and Ivy on an adventure. All you need is your imagination, and off, off we go! go! Lively Lewis Stories! One night, Ivy had a very special dream about a very special place. Beneath a sky of cotton candy clouds, there was a jungle with tall green trees and tropical plants. She'd been there before. It was home to so many animals. Toucans and tigers and monkeys. It was also where her friend lived, Chester the chimpanzee. Chester was a silly monkey. He loved making jokes and sticking out his tongue, something that always made her laugh. In her dream, she could hear him talking to her. Come back, Ivy, he said excitedly. I want to play again. Ivy grew so excited that she smiled in her sleep. I'll try, Chester. Really, I'll try. And don't forget the bananas. Chester loved bananas. Even though his jungle was filled with all sorts of sweets and juices, he didn't care much for them. He preferred the bananas from Ivy's world. I won't forget them, Ivy promised. Once Ivy woke up, she ran downstairs to find Levi and her parents eating breakfast in the kitchen. Mom, Mom, we have to go to the jungle. Uh, what jungle? Asked Mom. Chester's jungle. Aw, Chester, Levi sighed happily. I miss him. Well, I had a dream about him, said Ivy. We have to go back. He needs bananas. Levi stood up suddenly from the table, almost knocking down his cereal box. No way. I had a dream about a banana last night. Really? said Ivy. Yeah, except it was big, like bigger than this house. Some dream, said Dad, still munching on some breakfast toast. I like me some fruits and all, but I can't say I've ever dreamed of them. Levi and Ivy both cornered Dad in his chair and repeatedly begged him, Please let us go, please, we want to visit Chester. They jumped up and down, making Dad's head spin. Okay, okay, said Dad, but we have to ask your mom first. What do you think, honey? Mom gave it some thought. Finally, she smiled. You know what? A day in the jungle sounds like a fantastic idea. Levi and Ivy cheered and clapped like little monkeys themselves. With that, Mom hurried into the pantry and pulled out a bushel of bananas. For our furry friend, she explained, tucking them in her purse. The three of them stood outside while Dad went to start his car. But it wasn't really a car at all. The ground beneath their feet began to shake. Levi and Ivy grabbed onto Mom so that they wouldn't fall. Just then, the grass split, and up from the earth came a great big biplane. Dad waved from the pilot's seat. Get in, everybody. Mom, Levi, and Ivy climbed into the back seats, their hair flying in all directions. Dad angled the plane up, and they shot off into the sky, heading straight for the clouds. Ivy, your wand. Ivy couldn't hear him through all the wind. What? Your wand. Oh, right. Ivy took out her magic wand, giving it a sharp wave. To my friend's jungle, please. Just as the plane disappeared into the white fluffiness of the clouds, they reemerged in a sea of pink cotton candy ones. The ones, just like in Ivy's dream. We're here, said Dad. Yay, said Mom. Nice fly in there, pilot. Soon after, Dad lowered the plane out of the clouds, revealing a great big jungle. Along the side, there was a dirt field before the trees grew tall and green. So Dad decided to park the biplane there. Levi and Ivy hopped out as the engine hiccuped and then came to a stop. Well, it's about time! The kids gasped and looked around, trying to find where the voice was coming from. Seconds later, they could see a small ball of fur in the trees, brown as chocolate with tan hands and feet swinging down the trunk. Chester! They screamed. Chester cannonballed right into Levi's stomach, nearly knocking the wind out of him. For Ivy, he was nicer and just hopped on her shoulders. I was waiting on you two forever, Chester grumbled, crossing his long furry arms. What took you so long? We came as fast as we could, said Ivy. Pish posh, Chester waved her off. You're here now. Where are my bananas? Mom took them out of her purse. They're here, Chester. Thanks, Miss Lou, 
Immediately, Chester started stuffing his face with the bananas. The peels went flying, even landing splat on Dad's face. Hey, said Dad. Ivy started to laugh. Slow down, Chester. You're going to get a bellyache. Belly aches are better than no food aches, said Chester. I haven't had a good mealio in a long time. All the other chimps in my pack, they take all the good food. That's terrible, cried Levi. It's not terrible now. Chester beamed, big teeth and all, showing all the yellow mush between his gums. Both Levi and Ivy wrinkled their noses. Gross, they said. Chester tossed his last peel over his shoulder. Now that my belly's full, who's up for a game of swinging? Levi and Ivy both jumped. Me, me! And they were off, Chester taking them by the arms and swinging them up and down and around the tree branches. More fun than any jungle gym they'd ever played on in school. It also made them dizzy from how fast they were turning. Every time they started to fall, Chester would grab them and throw them up in the air over and over again. Eventually, all their screaming got the attention of three other monkeys. Baby ones from his pack. They swung on the trees behind them, cackling and blinking their big beady eyes. Ivy wanted so badly to slow down so she could pet one, but she was going too fast. In the middle of their swinging, they suddenly heard a loud, angry screech. Chester brought them down to the jungle floor right away. When Levi and Ivy's dizziness started to wear off, they saw it, or him. A big chimpanzee towering over them, blacker than smoke and twice the size of Chester. What is it, Hugo? Chester grumbled. Hugo was Chester's brother and the alpha of the pack. I told you not to bring humans here, said Hugo in his sharp voice. They're my friends. I don't care. Hugo narrowed his eyes. They don't belong here. Get rid of them. Chester sighed loudly. He didn't want his friends to leave, but he didn't have a choice. His brother was the leader and he had to obey what he said. Come on, guys, said Chester. I'll take you back to your plane. Okay. Levi and Ivy were disappointed too, but they understood that Hugo made the rules in this jungle. They said goodbye to the three little chimps and waved sadly at the other monkeys in the pack before they followed Chester back the way they came. Once they returned, Levi, Ivy, and their parents decided to explore another part of the jungle instead of going home right away. The waterfalls liked to change colors during the summer. Checking it out would make for good pictures. Chester, however, sulked alone at the edge of the forest. Oh, Hugo, he muttered, kicking the dirt. Why does he always, always, always have to ruin all the fun? It wasn't fair. Hugo had everything easy. If Chester had just half the respect Hugo got from the other monkeys, Chester would be happy, but that would never happen. While continuing to swing along the outskirts of the jungle, the corner of Chester's eye caught something big and yellow. He stopped swinging. There was something yellow behind the branches, but it wasn't a bright yellow like the sun. It was just yellow. Yellow like a lemon or a daffodil or a banana. Chester quickly swung over, pushing back the leaves. He gasped, it was a banana, a ginormous one, practically 10 trees long. He swung off his tree and landed on its belly, sliding down to the center. It was a big, beautiful banana, and no one had even taken a bite of it yet. Delicious. It didn't make sense to him how no one had found this majestic fruit yet, but he wasn't gonna complain. The banana was his, and when he brought it back to the pack, they would have to respect him now even Hugo. But how was he ever going to fit it into the jungle? Even if it could fit beneath the branches, the space between the trees wasn't wide enough for a big banana boat to sail through. But Chester wasn't going to give up. This was his ticket to finally getting the respect he deserved. Rubbing his hands together, Chester flew off the banana and landed hard in the dust beside him. He was a fairly strong chimp, definitely capable of moving it himself, no problem. All those years swinging through the trees had helped him pack on some muscle. If anyone could do it, it was him. Screeching, Chester pushed and pushed the banana with all his might, but it didn't even move an inch. Rats, said Chester. There had to be another way. If pushing didn't work, maybe pulling would. Chester galloped to the other side, looking for a part he could pull. He settled on the stem, wrapping both his furry arms around it, and he started to pull. Nothing moved again. Chester let the stem go and scratched his head. 
this job might require some help. There was only one family that he trusted to do so. Pulling out his fur phone, he dialed a number and held the phone up to his ear. The Lewises had found the waterfall they were looking for. Water came down in hues of purple, violet, grape, and plum. Where the falls meet the lake, the mist was sweet, almost as sweet as soda. Mom and dad kicked their feet in the water while a mermaid decorated Ivy's hair with shells and sea flowers. How does she look, Prince Levi? Asked the mermaid. Good, is all Levi said, swimming around them. And I'm not a prince. Wait, hold on, Ivy told the mermaid. She felt something buzzing in her pocket. It was her cell phone. She flipped it open. Hello? Hi, Ivy, it's me. Chester? Ivy frowned. Everyone else overheard and was also confused. Chester sounded anxious. Um, you guys haven't left yet, have you? No, said Ivy. We're at the waterfall. Good, I need you to come back. Uh, why? Well, um, it's hard to explain. Just get over here. But Hugo said... Never mind, Hugo, shouted Chester. You and Levi are my best friends. I need you now more than ever. Ivy sighs. Okay, stay there. She hung up the phone and turned to her family. We have to go. Guys, uh, Chester says he needs us. Is he okay? Levi asked. I think so, said Ivy, but we should really go make sure. They bid farewell to their mermaid friend and quickly climbed back into their biplane, flying back over the edge of the jungle. When Levi peered over the edge, he could hardly believe his eyes. There was a banana down there, a really, really big one. And hopping on top of it was a miniature monkey person waving around trying to get their attention. It's like the banana I saw in my dream, Levi whispered. Once the plane landed, Chester was ready to jump on their shoulders. He pointed frantically at the banana. See that? See that? I found that. That is so weird, said Mom. I thought you guys didn't have bananas in your world. Chester shrugged. I don't know, but I'm not complaining. Not only is it a banana, it's the mother banana, and it's all mine. Well, that's great and all, Chester. Dad patted on its side. But um, how are you getting all of this home? That's where you guys come in, Chester beamed. But none of us can push it, Ivy cried. It's way too big. Yeah, I know. Anyone got any ideas? Levi thought hard. It is too big. We're going to need an excavator or something to move it. Chester didn't know what an excavator was. Obvious enough by his confused face. Levi's mouth opened. Wait. Maybe not an excavator, but we do have something. (gasps) Dad's plane. That's right, said Ivy. We can lift the banana. Dad waved his hands. Whoa, 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 whoa. That sounds great. In fantasy land, our plane can hardly lift us, much less a three-story long banana. Come on, Dad, we can do it. Please, Mr. Lou, Chester encouraged. Can't we try? Pretty, 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 please. Dad sighed but found himself caving when looking at all their little desperate faces. We'll need a miracle, he muttered. The kids and their monkey friend brightened. Now they just had to figure out how to make it work. Using the ropes, they tied the banana up by the stem, middle, and bottom and attached the ropes to the front and the back of the biplane, away from the wings. Dad hopped into the pilot's seat again while everyone else got out of the way and watched with bated breath. This could be it, thought Chester. This could be the way he got this great banana home. The engine sputtered and sputtered until finally it rumbled to life. Once the plane was ready for takeoff, Dad pulled back the throttle, slowly and surely nudging it forward. The plane stalled for a second under the weight of the banana, but managed to follow into the air. Everyone jumped up and down, cheering. It's working, said Ivy. Until it didn't. Suddenly, Dad's plane dropped, the heaviness too great. The rope started to snap, and the banana swung down, hitting several treetops before landing back in the dirt. Dad brought the plane back down. No, no, Chester was shouting. I'm sorry, Chester, said Levi. Nothing's working. How about you just eat it here? Eat it, said Chester. I can't eat this all to myself. Your monkey friends will help you. Chester sadly shook his head. But that's the thing. My pact won't respect me if I just bring them here. It's not the same as me bringing it to them, you know? 
so that Hugo will be impressed. Levi and Ivy both put their hands around Chester's shoulders, comforting him. No matter what anyone says, whether you have a big banana or not, said Levi, you're still a very good friend and you deserve the world. Yeah, said Ivy, you don't have to impress him. Maybe, Chester looked doubtful. Sounds of monkeys screeching and swinging through the branches filled the air around them. Everyone turned and saw monkeys appearing in the trees, including Hugo. Brother, Hugo's voice thundered. I thought I made myself clear. No humans. Yeah, I know, I know, said Chester. What is the meaning of this? Hugo touched the splinter trunk of a once tall tree. What have you done to our jungle? The other monkeys started screeching, pointing at the big banana lane in the sun. Even Hugo's eyes widened. What? I found this. Chester hopped down from Ivy's shoulders. It's for all of us. All? Said Hugo. Yes, said Chester. You, me, our family, my human friends, if they want it. If we take turns eating it, then we can make it smaller so we can take the rest home. Hugo swung down the base of the tree. You would share this with us? Chester nodded. Chimps don't share, said Hugo. I know, said Chester, but I do. The other monkeys behind them started jumping along the trees, excited by the thought of eating such a big, tasty fruit. Hugo, who hardly ever smiled, let one slip. Thank you, brother. In hordes, the monkeys rained down on the banana, stuffing their faces as soon as their feet touched the peel. The Lewis family stepped back to make room for them. Hugo held out a big hand. No, he said gruffly. Stay. Can we? Mom asked. We really don't want to be a burden. No. Hugo continued shaking his head. You helped my brother. You can stay. Yeah, Luz, help us eat. Chester smiled. That day, the Lewis family helped themselves to the banana alongside the other monkeys. It was a slow journey, but as the belly started to fill up, the banana began to properly shrink, enough so that it could now easily fit between the trees. Half of the monkeys carried the banana on their backs, while the other half carried Chester, praising him as their hero. The Lewises waved goodbye as the monkeys headed back to their jungle. See you next time, Chester, shouted Levi. Chester, far away now, waved back. Call me on my third phone. Soon after, the monkeys and the banana disappeared from view, disappearing into the deep sea of jungle trees. Did you learn a lesson from this story? If so, what was it? And parents, do your kids have a story idea? Leave a comment on our Apple Podcast review page with five stars, the idea and your kid's name, for a chance to join Levi and Ivy on their next adventure. Until next time. Thanks for listening. Come back for more.